Hey guys, it's Saga from Techworks. It seems the OnePlus 6 is all about the big display with a notch at the front and the improved dual cameras at the back. This video is all about the dual cameras on this new phone. I wanted to get this video out sooner, but I was waiting for OnePlus to add the portrait mode to this front facing camera. They released an update a few days back, so I'm finally able to make this video for you. The main camera is still a 16 megapixel sensor with f1.7 aperture like on the 5T. But now we get a larger pixel size of 1.22 micron and it also has optical image stabilization. The secondary camera has a 20 megapixel sensor with f1.7 aperture and a smaller pixel size of 1 micron. This one does not have OIS and it is only used for sensing depth information for portrait shots. Ever since including a secondary camera on the OnePlus 5, they have been experimenting with it and are yet to find the perfect way to make the most use of it. This time, both the cameras have a similar focal length of 27mm just as with the 5T but now it is only used for assisting with portrait images and not for enhancing the low light shots like before. You can still take 2x images but they are no longer optically zoomed and are just digitally zoomed by cropping the images. Primary camera is used for capturing both images and videos so the secondary camera has a very limited functionality here. I have tried taking portrait images by covering one of the lenses at a time and the camera interface tells you that the lens is covered. So you can rest assured that both the cameras are working like they should. You can shoot 4K videos at up to 60 frames per second, 1080p videos at up to 240 frames per second and 720p videos at 480 frames per second. You can shoot a minute long video in 480 fps and choose the parts that you want to slow down later on. Now the primary camera comes with OIS and EIS but it is not used in the way that you might think. Optical image stabilization works normally when you are in photos mode. It helps to negate and compensate for the camera movement while you are taking pictures. This is specially helpful in lower light, so the shutter remains open for a longer time to capture more light. Now when you switch to the video mode, in some conditions it uses OIS to stabilize the videos and EIS in others. I was surprised to find out that OIS and EIS never work together to stabilize the video. When you are shooting 4K and 1080p videos at 30 frames per second, it only uses EIS. And optical stabilization is at work while capturing 4K and 1080p videos at 60 frames per second. Common understanding is that OIS and EIS work together to stabilize the footage. But sadly, that is not the case. I have asked and confirmed this from OnePlus. The resulting videos are interesting and we will take a look at them later on in this video. At the front, we still get a 16 megapixel camera with f2.2 aperture and electronic stabilization. After the software update released last week, you can now take portrait mode images with the front facing camera as well. Interface of the camera app is very simple. You get a zoom button right above the shutter button and swiping to the left gets you to the portrait mode just like on the OnePlus 5T. You can also swipe up to get to all of the other camera modes. Get ready for a lot of image and video samples from this camera. But before that, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the amazing videos coming up on this channel. Now the camera performance is better than the OnePlus 5T in almost all conditions. Daylight images have ample amount of details, but I think these images fall a bit behind in terms of contrast. Sharpness is on point and you will find the overall image to be pleasing. I have used and tested every OnePlus smartphone that came out. But I was always a bit reluctant to use any of them as my main camera for taking images and videos. This seems to be changing with the OnePlus 6. There is obviously a scope for improvement, but I am liking the way that it captures colors and handles the dynamic range. Here are a few images captured with and without the HDR mode turned on. You can see the difference that the HDR mode makes. It brings up a lot of details from the shadows while keeping the highlights in check. And it also manages to maintain natural looking colors even while capturing HDR shots. Now the secondary camera does not have a telephoto lens, but you can still take 2x images which are digitally zoomed like these. This option was also available on the OnePlus 5T, but overall quality of the zoomed images on the OnePlus 6 has improved quite a lot. Before we move on to the close-up shots, here is a quick test of the focusing speed of this camera. It changes the focus from near to far objects very quickly while shooting 4K on 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. But when you switch to shooting 60 frames per second videos, 
it takes long time to switch the focus and you can also see it hunting to find that perfect focus. This might have to do something with the OIS motors being active while shooting 60 frames per second footage. Despite of this small issue, once the camera sets its focus, the close-up and macro shots turn out really good. The subject that you are trying to capture is in sharp focus and thanks to the wide f1.7 aperture, the background is blurred out very nicely as you can see in all these shots. Coming to the portrait shots, this is where the secondary camera is put to use. Both the cameras combine the information that they have gathered and then the software algorithm tries its best to accurately differentiate the subject and blur the remaining parts of the background. Just like any other smartphone, it's not perfect at detecting the edges while shooting portrait shots, but it tries its best and does a really good job. If you have been following the channel for a while, you might know that I love taking portrait shots of objects and the OnePlus 6 has really impressed me with its abilities. I like this particular image very much. You can see that the main subject are these flowers and they have very complex edges all around. The background of the shot is also very busy, but the OnePlus 6 managed to keep all of the flowers in focus and blurred everything around it very accurately. Here's another good portrait mode image. The bike is at an angle, so it did very well to just keep the engine in focus because I have tapped on it and all of the other things which are not in the plane of focus have been gradually blurred out. Thanks to the wide aperture on both the lenses, you can take good portrait shots in lower light. Now as you move to artificial or lower lighting conditions, you still end up with good looking images. I haven't compared these images with the flagship devices like the S9 Plus, iPhone 10, or the Pixel 2 yet. So right now, I can't really say how it compares to those cameras. But it is definitely a step ahead of the dual cameras on the OnePlus 5T, especially in lower light and in conditions that demand high dynamic range. It captures accurate colors and low noise as you can see in these shots. Optical image stabilization on the primary lens is very helpful in lower light. It lets the phone keep the shutter open for a longer time, so it captures more light and you rarely see any blurred images. These images are sharp, so if you zoom in at the text on this board, you can read it without any issues. The 16 megapixel front facing camera delivers slightly better results than previous OnePlus phones. The images are detailed and show slightly better dynamic range compared to the OnePlus 5T and it manages to capture sharp looking images in lower lighting conditions as well. Thanks to one of the latest software updates, you can now take portrait images with this front facing camera. It is not very good at isolating the subject from the background and struggles a lot with hair in most of the portrait shots. But I am sure OnePlus is working on this issue and will be fixing it in one of the future software updates. Here is a quick video test from the front facing camera of the OnePlus 6. It has electronic stabilization, so the video is a bit cropped in. You can shoot videos in up to 4K resolution at 60 frames per second. And as I explained earlier in the video, the primary camera uses OIS only while shooting videos at 60 frames per second. And while recording at 30 frames per second, videos are stabilized via electronic stabilization. Here are two clips showing OIS and EIS side by side. This is one of those rare times when I prefer electronically stabilized videos over the optically stabilized ones. Videos are of good quality, but the colors and white balance are not always accurately represented. You can capture a minute long 720p video in 480 fps and choose the part that you want to slow down later on. It is good to have higher frame rate videos, but I like better quality videos, so I prefer 1080p videos that you can shoot in 240 frames per second and the 60 frames per second 4K videos. There is also an option to record 1080p time lapses, and these time lapse videos are electronically stabilized. So, to conclude, in daylight, it takes really good images shows accurate colors, images are sharp and there are plenty of details in almost every shot and I am happy with the dynamic range that it offers. Portrait images are good but like with any other smartphone, there is a scope of improvement with future software updates, especially for the front facing camera. Low light images might not be the sharpest or the best in comparison to few other flagship smartphones, but they are definitely an improvement over the OnePlus 5 and 5T. And if you add in 480p slow motion, and the 60 frames per second 4K video capability, these dual cameras on the OnePlus 6 are well above average and in many ways the best that you can get in under 35,000 rupees. If you are using the OnePlus 5 or an older device, 
then you can upgrade to the OnePlus 6 for its camera performance alone and you also get other things like bigger display, water resistance, more RAM and faster internals. But if you are using the 5T, I would suggest you to wait for the 6T since that might be a better upgrade option for you. I am already working on comparing these cameras with some of the other flagship devices. But if you want to see it compared with a specific smartphone, you can let me know and I'll try to make that video for you guys. What are your thoughts about the camera on the OnePlus 6? Has it impressed you? Or is there something that you want them to improve? Let me know in the comments. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.